What's up everyone, it's your boy Normbrad89 here, continuing the Scooby-Doo review series as now we are on to Be Cool Scooby-Doo, which is the 12th incarnation of the Scooby-Doo franchise in terms of television shows, and this, in terms of my feelings on it, was the biggest surprise. This was the one going into it based off just like the looks, the design of the characters, and like some of the stuff like the way just off a glance... I didn't expect to like this one, but damn, this season, the two seasons that they have of Be Cool Scooby-Doo are freaking fantastic. So much fun. I highly recommend this one. So this is going to be a very positive heavy, positive, heavy video. So I hope you stay tuned to hear my thoughts on this 12th incarnation of the Scooby-Doo television shows. So let's do this. Roll it. So Be Cool Scooby-Doo premiered in 2015, actually October 2015, and this one was actually on Cartoon Network, and they went with a, the character designs are completely different in this one, the animation style and stuff is a lot different too, but the characteristics of our characters are very similar to like the 60s and 70s versions of the Scooby-Doo gang, and I even like Shaggy and Scooby in this one, they're not really much of cowards, they're more of like kind of the lazy stoner type characters, you know what I mean? They don't play them off as cowards. They actually do some really smart stuff, and I think Scooby and Shaggy have a lot of funny, like, kind of those Laverne and Shirley moments when they're trying to trick the villains and stuff, and they put on their disguises and everything. There's a lot of really good ones in this two seasons, and there is two seasons of Be Cool Scooby-Doo, 52 episodes in total, and I think it's a freaking complete blast as this is the crew as they're going on a last hurrah before they separate together, so it's kind of a summer break. They're going to solve mysteries, and they're traveling the country, encountering a bunch of mysteries, and having some fun before they all go off on their, you know, their own adventures and stuff, so I really like that aspect as it kind of seems like a road trip type film. And in terms of voice cast, we have Matthew Lillard back, Frank Welker, Gray DeLise, and Kate Matucci. I'm sorry if I butchered that last name, but yes, we have them all back, them as the voice cast for the crew in this one. And for me, the characters, and they're just so fantastic. Like, in terms of one specific character in general, like... Daphne. Daphne is just an absolute blast in this season, for real. She goes with these very slapsticky gimmicks, and it's very comedy heavy. Like I feel like Daphne is probably the the usually the comedy levity to every situation in this series, like for real. And she has a great banter and rapport with you know Fred Jones. Like their characters, just their rapport together and on screen chemistry is fantastic in these two seasons. But Daphne in particular, like she gets on these things where she just starts the episode and she wants to do something like she took up ventriloquism in one of the episodes and then so the whole episode she has a ventriloquist dummy with her and she's like trying to talk and speak through it and using it to speak and everything and then there's another one where she decides to narrate the episode so she's talking as if she's the narrator for every situation that the gang gets into so it's really hilarious one in particular that I really love is one where she grows a beard and she has a beard on and stuff and like she's wearing this beard and like Fred Jones is like, you're a woman, you, you can't wear a beard, like what are you doing? And like, he, it just baffles him, he's so upset by the beard and like the whole constant episode, there's like this back and forth between them over the facial hair and it's just absolutely freaking hilarious. We also must talk about the mystery machine. This is absolutely the best version of the mystery machine we've ever had. It's literally like a Batmobile or a James Bond car, like Fred Jones. Fred has a freaking awesome remote control. He just beeps it and he can turn it into an airplane, a deep diving submarine, a chemistry like actual lab inside of the whole entire inside he could turn the labs and like the walls flip out and like Velma's able to do all her technical work and her scientific work like it's freaking amazing for real the mystery machine is totally another character in this season like you know it just as much as you know Shaggy Scooby or Fred or any of them the mystery machine is its own character as well and one really great episode is game of chicken that's a fantastic episode where they have to go help fred's friend one of his friends from back in the day who's like an extreme guy who likes deep diving going into caves and rock climbing and he ends up coming across this cave that has a mystery and a hidden treasure apparently behind this wall and he goes missing so fred and the gang have to go find him like that's a really funny episode because they meet this guy that's in the cave whose name is rick 
Like that's his name is Rick, but the way he says it, he says it in such a specific way that the gang, none of them know Fred and like Velma and Scooby and Shaggy. Eventually Daphne does say his name right, but it's just absolutely hilarious because they get into that situation where it's like, it's Rick. And they're like, Rick? No, Rick. Like it's just back and forth. And this, this series like as much more comedy heavy compared to a lot of the other serious seasons that we've had prior to this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one is much more comedy heavy, but I think that's awesome. This is a season that you can just throw on, have on in the background and just enjoy it, laugh at it because it's there for literally just that reason. You know what I mean? It's slapsticky, silly comedy for 30 minutes, you know, and they do have some overarching storylines, but it's not something that you have to like over complexity that you have to commit to like you know shaggy and scooby get a clue it's nothing of that nature be quiet scooby-doo is another fantastic episode where they end up in a crystal cave that is like able to collapse you have to be quiet because the crystals like the sound reverberates and re uh, retract like you know gets off of the crystals and it can cause an earthquake and they can all die so the whole episode like fred creates like hand signals for them but none of them know what the hand signals are so yeah that's like a lot of these episodes lean into very comedy heavy moments and like aspects of them and i know that's probably a negative for some people that could be a negative because there's nothing really um there's no levity or weight to the episodes where you feel like there's stakes or anything like that. At no time do you really feel like the Mystery Machine crew is in danger. But yeah, the comedy is just so well written and the characters are so charismatic that I really enjoy this season. Add to that, I think we have a lot of really good <clears throat> excuse me, music as well in these two seasons. The theme song, it has no lyrics to it, but it's a very just like really good kind of guitar riff with the drums in the background and it's just very simple but it's like it kind of gets you pumped up it gets you energized and then the songs that they have for the specific episodes they do have some lyrics in them but they're not lyric heavy it's much more focused on the guitar riffs and the bass and the drums and i think they did a very good job like i said the music in these two seasons are pr pretty much some of my favorites in any of the scooby-doo show so as you can tell be cool scooby-doo is just an absolute blast this is one that i highly recommend right now you can stream this i believe on boomerang or hbo max those are the two places you can stream it and this one is just like I said has so much to offer in terms of the comedy it's very well written the characters are very charismatic and it's got a fun light-hearted nature that like I said you can just throw this on with your kids and have fun and laugh your ass off at these at the like the antics that these crew get into and stuff or just have it on in the background while you're like cleaning your house and chilling and everything so be cool scooby-doo like I said it was one that highly surprised me because going into it I had kind of low expectations. I believe before I watched this one, I just watched Shaggy and Scooby get a clue. I finished that season. And I think I even watched like a couple episodes of Velma. So I was kind of on a on a low end, a low high, you know what I mean, with the Scooby-Doo franchise. And then I was like, all right, let's get some be cool Scooby-Doo in there. And then this is one that I just, I couldn't put down. Once I started it, I just had to keep going all the way through. It's so fantastic. So thanks for sticking around with me all to hear my thoughts on Be Cool Scooby-Doo. Please let me know down in the comment section, is this one that you really are enjoying, that you got to check out the first run of it when it premiered in 2015, or have you never seen any episodes? And if you haven't, like I said, definitely go out, search this one out, find it, because I think this is one that you will laugh at. You'll get a lot out of it, and it's a really good entry into the Scooby-Doo universe. And like I said, hit me up down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on it so we can discuss down below. Drop a like on the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post a video. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.